Uh, director here. Do you remember the director's name? Oh, uh, man, I thought you... Dan Gilroy. Yeah, that's it. Dan Gilroy made a big splash. There he is right there. Dan Gilroy. God damn. Get that, man, that, man, <laughs> that man need to eat. <laughs> Jesus. You rang. <laughs> That man look like a Q-tip and a three-piece suit. <laughs> I ain't trying to talk bad. I'm just concerned about his health. So I thought I was looking at the Walking Dead. <laughs> get that man. Get that man a sandwich or something, man. Get that man a coke and a smile. <laughs> Which one's better? One or two? Better or worse? No different. No different. We tried to get our commercial in, Martin. We were not. We we were not fast enough, Martin. I'm afraid that we didn't have we, a million dollars to we, spend on it. I, I had man, I had five million. I I was gonna buy five spots, man, for DTMerch.com. I was gonna put all these people out there on notice about all these wonderful things that we have here in the store. Now, and this is what I want to get to. In addition to all the things that we have, which are the shirts, the stew pots, the backpacks, the phone covers, the Kung Fu TJ is making an appearance in the store right now. Oh, there he is. Yeah, the Kung Fu TJ shirt is finally here. And if you buy any item, or, uh, and that is, uh, let me see here. We have a Valentine's Day sale going on. So I think up until Valentine's Day, buy any item, you get the second one at 14% off. He made a big splash with his first film that he directed, which is Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler featuring a very creepy Jake Gyllenhaal. Mind? As a guy who's going out there doing anything for the story, I tell you the reason why this movie really sells is because uh, one of the biggest things that people say just Jake Gyllenhaal just creepy as fuck, man. You know, in, in the movie, those eyes, those big ass eyes that never blink, that never blink, his demeanor, the way he's in front of people, man. And you know something, uh, Dan Gilroy took note of that. He's like, all right, I see that people like very uncomfortable characters, mm -hmm. and the movie did so well that he was able. He's able to attract bigger talent after that. Man got Denzel as an afro with glasses. <laughs> that, that afro got, I think, more attention than Denzel. And you know what? Uh, we're talking about Roman J. Israel. Roman J. Esquire. Israel. Esquire. Don't forget the, don't, and he'll remind you too, don't forget that Esquire up in there. It was a fascinating character. This courtroom would not allow you to use the bathroom. You would, by all definition, be detained. I'm going to hold you in contempt if you continue to pursue this. You're asking me to obey an erroneous court decision, and you tell me to wait. In my experience, wait. Okay. <laughs> you see what an asshole this judge is? <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like that. I like that black woman in the back. To pursue this, you're asking me to obey. She's like, damn, is that Denzel? <laughs> he used to be fine. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> That Negro fellow is a hard times. <laughs> Fascinating character, man. Fascinating character in the film. Uh, too bad he just went in a better movie. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was. It, I mean, seriously, it's one of the best. It is one of the best performances that you will never see because you're just not gonna bother to see this this this, this mediocre film. It's one of those movies that has all the elements of a great film and just manages to not be one. It really does, man. And, and this and poor Denzel, man. This was a this this was like a departure. Yeah. Uh, from the norm from, for from any of the characters he usually plays. And it's a great character, man. It's a great character. And that's, that's one of the movies where I love the character. Yeah. I love the performance. Yeah. I hate the film, man. Um, I, I, I didn't quite hate it, but it just never crossed over into what it could be. It just, just left you kind of like, okay. Yeah. I can't say I hated it either. It was fascinating in some parts. It was just frustrating is what it was. It's, it's going to a fancy restaurant, knowing you're going to pay a lot of money, but the food looks good, and then when you eat it, there's not a lot of seasoning That's on it. That's a great way of putting that. That's exactly <laughs> the way it is. So Dan Gilroy said, damn, I guess I better go back to my good luck charms. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, Jake. Yeah. You know, Renee. Let me, get, let me get back to Jake and Renee Russo. Yeah, and you know, and it's funny. He also said, okay, so I get it. Y'all like Y'all like Jake Gyllenhaal when I'm working with him. Y'all like creepy and crazy. Is that what y'all want? Okay, I'm, I'm about to lose my goddamn mind then. Y'all want crazy, though. You asked for this. <laughs> Got this thing, Velvet Buzzsaw. So crazy that it's, it's about killer paintings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, paint that kills art. It looks like a dramatic way to treat a ghost story because that's what it is. Because I mean, it sounds sound like the worst ghost story that you ever heard. You sure. Know? Or it sounds like one that you saw back in the 70s on an episode of Night Gallery. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. It's like, you know, the, the goat, the, like, it goes like this, like, oh, Old Man D's or whatever his name D's. is. I know. Old Man D's. <laughs> First of all, you want to go with D's? D's yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh. so, somebody going to put nuts in here? Anyone? 
<laughs> it's too easy. I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> to that credit, they did avoid it. Uh, but, you, but you won't be able to. <laughs> come on, man. Y'all shit would have been so vandalized on every painting. You would have had some dude writing nuts, nuts at the end of D's. <laughs> nuts. But uh, old man D's, he was... He's like the Freddy Krueger of paintings, man. You know, he died so bitter that his paintings became became uh, 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 supernatural killers. Not only did he have to like try to burn them and get rid of them, and it's just like in a horror movie, he died before before he could destroy uh -huh. them. So of course somebody comes in, they see the paintings. Ooh, paintings! Yes, I can get rich off these. <laughs> yeah, there's a young woman. She's uh up-and-coming art curator she wants to uh, actually make her name out there so she takes these paintings and starts representing this dead man of course the the soul vengeful spirit what demons or whatever and uh, still in these paintings so anybody who gets close to these paintings uh they die and they're so evil that even the paintings are just kind of like shit he ain't gonna get us we're gonna start killing people too you know like <laughs> yeah. sculptures and other paintings start to be right. <laughs> they, they, they all want to get into the act. They all, yeah, they're like, damn, that look kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Art starts to kill people that gets uh, uh, people that get near these paintings or, or anywhere near other pieces of art that are near the killer paintings themselves. Uh, sounds crazy, yeah. Sounds confusing, yes, yes, it is. Uh, you're about to even get more confused. As we show you this trailer, and by the way, we're reviewing this because everybody was like, "Man, you see how crazy this trailer is? Y'all got to talk about this." And you know something? Um, I was intrigued by it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer for Fel for Velvet Buzzsaw, which has a great trailer, if you ask me. Something truly goddamn strange is going on. Is that, that is Nicholas Cage moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pure fucking evil. <laughs> I can't save you. It's a great cast that they pulled together for this. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in the movie, I give it credit, man. The movie is, it, it delivers on the weirdness that it, that it promises. Uh, it, things get very, very strange in here. Strange to the point that I don't know what the fuck is happening. It starts out showing the art world and these these shallow, uh, superficial people who are shallow and superficial people to the point of being two dimensional, bordering on parody. Everybody, it it kills. You don't give a shit about. So there's just nothing there. That, that, see that that's that's it for me, man. Like I I really don't care about these people. Uh, first of all, I'm not. I'm not crazy about the art world anyway, so right. I might be a little biased, but looking at this, this just, you know, you put into this world of these pretentious assholes, man. And you, and it's not, it's not, it's not, a, not, not only do you want, not, not only do you not care about them, because that's what I'm saying. It's like, you could put this together, but I really don't care because by the end of it, it gets deeper with some message and I don't, I, I can care less by the end. Because um, I don't care about these people, but not only do I not care about them, but I want them to die. Of course. I hate these people, man. They don't die fast enough. And that's yeah, there's too many that, breaks in between the deaths. And th but you spend so much time in this with with them in their own world. Uh huh. It's like you. It's it's like it's like actually going to work with people you hate. Uh huh. They're sitting around. Because I I mean I, like look this is a movie about killer paintings, man. Uh huh. Let's get let's get to that let's shit. Get let's get it, let's yeah. get into it, man. Yeah. But no. I gotta look at these people make deals. I gotta watch them be shitty to other people. Uh -huh. I gotta to watch them other. go to parties and and, and 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 again, you know, put their nose up in the air and talk about nothing. I hate these people, and I want them to die. And they just, you know, and I gotta spend all this time with them before we even get to that. And I'm telling you, half of them don't even get there at all. You know, and I tell you, man, once you when you actually get to the point where you you start to see. Uh, People die in the trailer. They make it look kind of crazy. Yeah. See, that's the problem. Martin is right. Something like this. If you start out with something as crazy as killer paintings, haunted paintings from you know from <laughs> from an evil artist, you know what I mean? It's, uh, which really is some Freddy Krueger shit. You better like you either better like keep it going mm. and have the momentum be uh, fast so you don't have time to think about it. Right. <laughs> or keep your shit short because when they, when you finally see what's going on, when you finally start taking your time and you get time to think about it, not only does it sound stupid, but it looks stupid. Uh, and in the context of a trailer, it's like, oh shit, that's badass. When you when you were actually seeing it in the movie, it looks it looks dumb. I ain't gonna lie, they had that 
they they had that one scene where they had the uh this is when I first realized like this don't really work as well as I thought it would when they had that painting with the monkeys. Yeah. And and that I was, was, dude, that's the first one. <laughs> and I said it looked dumb as hell. <laughs> With, I, the, with the grease monkeys, the grease monkeys, I was yeah, like, the real, uh, a pun painting. And when, it, when those monkeys start looking at him and like try to pull him in, I, I laugh so hard because it just looks dumb. Right, right. <laughs> because when the movie, because by the top, but but because by this point you hate that dude. Uh huh. Uh, you get to see how stupid these paintings are and how they look and some and some of the art that, they, that they're doing. It's like, man, you know, come on. And 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 plus, uh. The characters seem like parodies of themselves anyway, yeah. but not in a good way. So not I'm not, I'm not, if you don't take the property seriously, you're not going to even take its more outlandish uh, uh, premise seriously mm -hmm. at all. In fact, it's going to, it's going to look just like, just like it sounds, man, kind of crazy and dumb. Uh, and it seems like, like, like parody. And yet it never goes enough to actually establish itself as a comedy. No, no. You, and you know something, I, as far as the characters go, it's not like I hate everybody in here. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the the one girl that I did like in here. Uh, who, who had five or six bosses by the time it was done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia Dyer. She's uh, been, you know, she's already on another Netflix property, which is Stranger Things. Right. Uh, she's the only. She's she's really the only character that you kind of like. You even want to root for, but I guess she's not shitty enough to have a, a, a storyline because right. she's she's <laughs> hardly in there. Mm -hmm. At times, it feels like a dark. Martin is right. It feels like a dark comedy. Because it's so cartoonish in some parts, but no, I, I don't know. I don't think it's satirical enough no. to be a dark comedy. That's the problem with it. Like some, it seems to be doing a satire on the art world and the people involved in it and the people, you know, those type of people that we see in here. But it's really not satirical enough or making any points to to, yeah. to be a satire. Uh, and when I did laugh at some certain things, I didn't know if I was supposed to be laughing. Yeah, I was a little confused. I'm like, I don't know if I'm laughing at this because they meant that. And you know, and like, and like I said, the concept of it, I don't think it's really, I don't, I don't think it's like it's it's, it's playing loose with its rules. The yeah. whole thing of like certain pieces of art that are not by this this evil uh, uh, artist, certain other pieces of art start to come to life. Yeah, and kill and, people, and kill people, and there's really no explanation for it. Now, some of it looks cool. Uh, there's a scene in here, but like the kills, I will I will tell you, man, the kills are actually. The, uh, the, uh, 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 good. Uh, there was one creepy part in here. They show uh, they show that robot. They call it a, a hobo robo. <laughs> and hobo man. Hobo, yeah. And there's a scene in here where Jake Gyllenhaal is getting chased by that thing down a dark hallway. And that part was actually that part was a little intense. I mean, anything that because they introduce early in the, in the in the movie, and it looks creepy even when it's sure. in, a, in a normal atmosphere. So this thing chasing Jake Gyllenhaal down a hallway, that was kind of terrifying. When Tony Collette, uh, her death scene in there, which they show you right here, but that that part I thought was good. Not only was it kind of a bloody kill that was in the in, in the movie, but I I I, I love that. And this is what more of the movie should have done, if you ask me. I love that everybody thought she was a piece of art. Her yeah. dead body was uh -huh. lying there for like a day. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. People taking pictures. And, and the little kids came, thought it was fake blood, and tracked it all over the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought, you know, I thought moments like that were brilliant. And I thought it should have, they should have showed and, that and more. Yeah. Had it been more of that, it'd been like, okay, I, I dig this. But yeah, it's it's weird because it's a it seems to be an indictment on the, the art world. Mm -hmm. And yet it's not like most people generally respect that world anyway yeah so it's like yeah okay you're just telling everybody what they already think to begin with <laughs> and and furthermore uh i mean yeah exactly exactly man <laughs> and furthermore there's a people that there are people who don't even need they don't even need to be in this they had this, john malkovich, john malkovich. I, was, I was i looked at this whole thing and i said what the fuck was he even doing here all we did was talk about his shitty art uh-huh and his alcoholism and his alcoholism which and he goes away so by, by the time he comes back in you're like Oh, I forgot you were in. He this. went to go get a drink, <laughs> <laughs> and never came back. With the first kill, the police came to investigate, and then yet all these people within the same circle are getting bumped off, and the police never come back. No, no, no they don't. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's performance art. You know, <laughs> they weren't real police. <laughs> and Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal, great actor. I think the character had potential, but there was no reason for this character to be gay other than to play on some gay stereotypes 
Well, he's bi. It, it, well, is he, is he bi? Because he says, like... He spends most of his time with a woman, having it, sex with her. Saying that he's, that she confuses him. Because I, I got that he was gay, and this is the one woman that actually turned him that, that turned him out. Because he said, you confuse me. No, because they, they spoke about how they had a past. Yeah, and again, they spoke about how... You're the one, you're the, like, you're, maybe we get two different things, because he's like, you're the one, like, that confuses me. You're the only one that I have a past with that's probably a female, because that ass is so good or something. I don't know. I, I think that still makes him bisexual. It, you know what? I, I got the feeling that he considered himself gay, and while he might be bisexual in nature, he, uh, you know, he didn't, he thought of himself as gay and fell for that woman. Now, he could be labeled as bi, bisexuality, but I think that's, you know, for, for him, uh, and plus he played it up so gay, too. I just got the feeling that it was just added for the performance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I, but I could, you know, he could be bisexual. But like I said, I, I, I don't, I, 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 I don't even care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fuck, I don't even care. Shit, character was sucked. Anyway, yeah, you know, watching I, that and it's going on two hours. I was like, oh man, if it wasn't, if we weren't going to talk about this today, I would have snapped this off a long time I, ago. Man, I, it, I got up early to watch this. And uh, I know a lot of people who are like, this is getting really good reviews from people. Is it? Yeah. And I, it, it, yeah, like I think, I think on Rotten Tomatoes last time I saw, because that's one of the reasons why I want to see it too. I, uh, I think a couple of days ago, I had like an 80%, 86%, something like that. What? I, I don't know because this shit was at Sundance and y'all were drunk when you saw it. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know because it was at Sundance and it was considered to be. Uh, you know, a festival film with and, big stars. Yeah, and you got a celebrated director. Got a celebrated director. Uh, you know, I don't. I, you know, I don't know if, you, if, if, if because everybody was looking for you know something that wasn't Roman J Israel, looking for the next Nightcrawler, and this is just that weird for you. I don't know what it is, man. And you know, God bless you, man. If you like this movie, that's fine. But I watched it this. I watched this this morning, and believe me, when I got up, I was fine. I was perfectly fine. I drank a little bit last night. I drank a lot last night, I ain't gonna lie, but I woke up. <laughs> I woke up feeling fine. I woke up excited to watch this. And as soon as I started watching this, that hangover started creeping in on me, man. <laughs> and I think it's because of this movie. It's, it was a struggle for me to get through this. Yeah, well, I, I, I didn't drink last night. I had no hangover. I had a good amount of sleep, wasn't tired. And it was a struggle for me to get through it, too. Okay, good. So it wasn't just no, that. No, it wasn't just you. It wasn't just the alcohol. No, because I was like, man, there's so many different things that seem like it wants to do or could be doing, and it's not doing any of them. I, look, I I, I'm, I don't know. It could have been alcohol or whatever, but this movie, to me, came across as pretentious and confusing as these fucking characters in the movie. I, I did not like this. I didn't like this at all. The, I tried to. I tried. Oh, they had other people that like David Diggs, man. That's one of the things that made I was like, I didn't even get his character. Yeah, he was, he was another one where it seemed like he was an important piece, and yet he kind of pops in and disappears. And that's what and I'm talking comes about. Comes back later. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Being confusing, like I don't understand mm -hmm. what certain people had mm -hmm. to do with this film, except making it longer. Uh huh. This should have been an hour and a half. <laughs> it should have. Y'all can buy into this bullshit if you want to. Like y'all, because y'all, y'all look at the director and they put some dramatic elements in here. It's a movie about killer paintings. Yeah. All right, you know, this is some shit, and, and not much else really. This, I wish, I wish Wes Craven was alive. He would have taken this shit and made exactly what it should have been. A fucking horror movie. Jason Blum would know Jason what to do Blum would know what to do with this. With five dollars. You know what I mean? This, 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 I, I admire you trying to make this a higher concept, but this, this is a horror movie with some killer paintings. This is some 80s, this is some 80s B-movie schlock right uh -huh. here. And I wish it would have been treated like that. Because yeah. I think you would have had a much more fun film. This shit is like a... Uh, it's like a, a what was that movie with the, the and it was stupid too. The it's hand. not a good movie. No, not the hand, but it was a uh, the mangler. Yes, the mangler. The mangler. Yeah. It's just a giant machine came to life and just start eating people. Right. Straightforward. <laughs> Paintings come to life and start eating people or killing people. We don't need none of this we other don't, don't. art world bullshit with this. In fact, I would have loved it more had they made more made it more of a satire of this eating and killing right. really shitty people in the art world and making a statement about how phony the art world is. Uh -huh. Instead, you made a phony-ass horror movie. Yeah. This is bullshit to me, man. I did, I did not I did not like this. Wow, you, go, you went with the bullshit, huh? Uh, this, when there's bullshit around, I'll go with the bullshit. Well, I'm right there with you, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, it's almost like y'all made a painting out of some bullshit. You just took a piece of shit and just smeared that all on the canvas. This movie, it's, yeah, I, if you like it, that's great. But this was a struggle. <laughs> Maybe you can make a, a a movie about Netflix shows that are killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, because this one was killing me. <laughs>
If you enjoyed this video, then you just made my day. And my day will get better if you hit the subscribe button. If you really love what we do, go check out our main site, doubletoasted.com. Over there, you'll not only find a longer form version of this video right here, but also the live streams that we do almost every night of the week. Check us out at dtmerch.com. Get some stuff, support us. And remember to always stay toasting.